My name is Emil. I'm a digital strategist and I answer marketing questions. Today's episode 25 and the question is all about how long does it actually take day to day, week to week to manage a PPC account? This question is from Reddit. It's from 38 legs. Sounds like an expensive shoe habit. And does PPC really take that much time? He's been working in the field for a while. He knows that it's time intensive taking somebody on, but after he gets a company to a point of stasis, at that point, he can manage multiple accounts for just a few hours a week is it seems too easy is he doing uh, something wrong something right um and it's a great question like there are points where your account just becomes something that are on autopilot i've been managing accounts for years and i'm going to take you back scenes to how i onboard clients and what my day-to-day workload looks like and how i'm constantly moving clients up a rung both to uh, increase their business and to uh, utilize more of the services that i offer In this video, I'm gonna cover how I onboard PPC clients when I do take them on, training clients to read data. This is super critical. I'll get into the details of why that matters. And then uh, I'm gonna walk you through a handyman PPC uh, case study that I took on for a 12 month period because it's one of the hardest accounts I think you can manage. Uh, But first, every Sunday I send out one email that recaps all the marketing questions I answered that week. If you want to stay up to date on best practices, strategies, and become an overall stronger marketer, I think you would really enjoy this recap. It would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to the newsletter and my YouTube channel. Now, back to the answer. When onboarding a client, we'll talk about this chart quite often, and it's Amazon stock price from 1997 to 2020. And if you look at it, it's got all the hallmarks of why they did well. Um, So much didn't change for such a long time and then out of nowhere, rapid explosive growth. Uh, I believe all businesses and all accounts go through this work cycle and growth cycle stage. And as we're maintaining uh, work for our clients, we should be cognizant of the fact that the work cycle stages are probably gonna be the ones that are intensive. This is onboarding a client, uh, rolling out new campaigns, new strategies, and the growth cycles are what we should be seeing as a result of those um, strategies implemented, uh, optimized, and perfected. Now, as these accounts uh, ebb and flow between these states, it doesn't mean that there isn't work to be done. There just may not be work to be done within the account that week, but there's always something happening. And and to be up to date and to uh, really represent your clients in, in, in the best light, I found that there's other things that I have to do every single week um, uh, to maintain uh, great client relationships and uh, ongoing results. The first is, Every week, I give myself 10 hours for continued education. This could be courses, classes, meetings with uh, people who would be close to mentor stage or they're in a position I really value and want to learn from them, um, or running experimental campaigns on your out of your pocket on your uh, behalf just to learn new platforms. This I do this every week, 10 hours a week minimum dedicated to CE. Um, then I add one hour a week for research per client. So if I have 10 clients, I'm going to add another 10 hours of research uh, a week for all of those clients. And I build that into my um, retainer or my rate with the client. You never want your client to sit down and talk to you about something in their business that you missed, that you should have known, like a new placement opportunity, new client base, new offering, new competitor. You have to stay up to date to it. So maintaining what's within the account is one dimension. There is multiple dimensions in staying up to date, uh, relevant, and being ahead of the curve and having the tools to reach into uh, your tool bag and pull out something nobody's expecting uh, at, at a certain level of a campaign or a new strategy and always trying to to move that ball forward. This is my schedule with most of the clients. Um, we set goals. Um, we set a return on investment target and not a ROAS target, but a return on investment because not everything that uh, can be just limited to ROAS. ROAS just means did that ad make you money? But what about all the infrastructure around that ad? Uh, the automation, my fees, the uh, infrastructure you needed within the uh, uh, company, um, invested overhead. There's so many other goals uh, that we need to meet financially that I, I work on a uh, return on investment model with my clients. And then data. Uh, I process lots and lots of data. I love it. It's something that just screams uh, my name and and going through it and understanding more from my clients is insanely valuable. 
that value is the data and that data is something my clients and I are hunting day in and day out. This is going to tell us where the market is going, what business decisions we need to be making, where we should be investing future funds, what should we, uh, what, what platform should we be looking at as the next stage to build on top of what we already have. And I teach my clients to look at KPIs, develop KPIs around a platform, service, and offer, and only focus on those. We only focus on two to three KPIs, no matter what the situation is, two to three, and those are going to be our decision makers. Ray Dalio has a book called Principles, and this is a great book, especially if you're growing a company or want to grow a company or working with growth companies. And he has a uh, cycle model for growth. So you set a goal. And you start going for that goal, but you're going to immediately hit a problem. And that problem is the opportunity to win because those problems, once you diagnose what the problem is, build a tool or a system to solve it, you're going to get to the next stage. And this keeps repeating. So you should go up, down, up, down, up, down. And I truly believe that. I have that discussion with my clients. And if we are on the same page, I run my business uh, in, in this model, and I want you to run your business in this model. And if this isn't compatible for us to, then we can't do business because what's going to happen is I'm going to get stale, and you're going to get stale, and the, the partnership's just going to fizzle away, just fall apart. Um, and I'm going to talk about the handyman uh, situation. This was a really cool uh, case study for me. I got to, uh, I was introduced to an organization. Uh, it was a two-man team. They really wanted to grow not a lot of money and all they didn't even have a website all they had was a uh, boosted fb post that sometimes worked sometimes didn't work most of their work was uh, word of mouth when they came to me uh this is the type of work i normally take on um small budgets smaller clients uh and and that means they don't have a lot of time to dedicate but he was like look they came highly recommended he was like look i'm dead serious about doing this uh, i'm gonna give it 12 months here is what i have for resources right now and as as uh, progress happens, I'm not taking anything out as profits. We're going to put it back in. Sounds like the Amazon model. I was like, I'm in. I'm 100% in. So here's what happens over 12 months with us working together. Uh, and, and this work, again, I'm just going to break it down in, in, in uh, chunk steps, but um, I'm, I'm sure you'll be following along quite easily. First is getting that client online. So taking this client, we had to create an infrastructure online. This is you know, domain, website, the whole nine yards. So I worked with a development team, worked with a design team, and helped get the, the an, r initial offering of what a website should look like and what it's doing. And the way I look at websites is 100% as tools. When I'm helping build them, I'm building a tool for your business, not a digital uh, marquee. We're, we're building a tool. Then we talked about ROI. What is the website cost? Uh, how? What does profitability look like? What are your, what is the jobs that you don't like? What jobs do you do like? And and we built an entire system around getting uh, cash positive ROI depending on the service. And then we want to automate some things. He's a two person team, so as we were working out the systems uh, here. We wanted to find where the administrative time sucks existed or where the customer service time sucks existed and how we can create automations around that. Then new offerings. Through the data, we found holes that other handymen and other service providers weren't filling. So we started doing it, op uh, opening up way new opportunities for this business. And then lastly, we had to start, because we did this so many times in that 12-month period, we had to start focusing separately on each division. Each division became their own little project. So our marketing arm... When I took over was FB Post, I said, I don't like passive uh, um, marketing for new initiatives like this. You are a service business, you, have, you solve direct problems, and there is no real automated tool to solve that problem. Like how much a paint job for a house costs, varies house to house, and somebody looking on Facebook isn't likely to hire you as fast as Google search. So we developed a badass Google search campaign. We focused specifically on two to three market opportunities for what he's really good and efficient at and has high margin for him. Once that started really taking off, we put in Bing search. We didn't go and start retargeting or anything like that on uh, Facebook. All of these accounts are pretty new. Reason we went to Bing search is we found that a vast majority of uh, his clients were people, professionals in, uh, in a certain part of town that were scheduling these work from work. And so they were using their phone, but if they weren't using their phone, they were likely using an e-machine that was had Bing rather than Google. So we're like, let's let's look at Bing, and Bing did really really well for this. Uh, you know, it started to do about twenty five to thirty percent of the revenue that Google did for about fifty percent of the cost. 
Then we moved to YouTube. We found what was working. He was starting to build up uh, uh, a lot of uh, um, people looking at his website, a lot of people looking at the tools we built on the website, and we wanted to retarget him through YouTube. So that's exactly what we did. From YouTube, we went to Display because we wanted we had some service offerings that you really don't search for, but once you see it, you know you want it. Like uh, a great example would be repainting your shutters. So a lot of people either replace their shutters. If you have good shutters, just repainting them is a, a something that isn't on your uh, uh, radar. And we found a bunch of communities that had red shutters and red shutters uh, with heat, with the sun beating down on them turned to pink. So we started doing geo-targeting display campaigns in areas that had red shutters and just saying, take your red shutters to X and had like really cool HTML5 um, uh, display campaigns and that got people to the site and then we had YouTube retargeting, then we had search and we would close that loop and we got about $300 a shutter to paint it, uh, which was incredible. And then finally, we, oh, well, not finally, but then we moved into Nextdoor. So we had this huge growth. Uh, at this point, he's at three vans. Uh, we're midway through the year. He's at um, three vans operating full-time plus uh, a few subcontractors. We go into Nextdoor because so many of our clients are recommending us on Nextdoor. So we want to own that conversation. Then we went back to Facebook and Instagram. This is oh, so late in the game, digitally speaking. But the reason I wanted to do this was Facebook and Instagram is actually a tough market for small businesses that need um, cash flow. And we focused on cash flow projects. Facebook and Instagram is not a cash flow project, but it became one for a service-based business uh, once everything else was rocking. And then we had excess cash. We had teams working, uh, businesses doing well. We went to radio because there were still some demographics we wanted to reach, and we wanted to reach them uh, in a native way. And this is when we went after our commercial clients, specifically doctors that had certain radio stations playing all the time inside their uh, offices and we wanted to do the office remodels. And this happened across a 12-month period and if I just stuck with positive Google search campaign, uh, uh, we, I would have been at three, three, two to three hours a week max on this account. But this account for a handyman was taking 15 hours a week at one point. Um, and uh, you know our structure was part profit sharing, part fee, so it was definitely lucrative for myself, lucrative for the client. And it got to a certain point where I offloaded uh, that client onto an, a bigger agency because he got to that point. And to this day, we still discuss things, we still have strategy, I still uh, uh, help develop some work because he's become a really good friend of mine. But uh, in that period of growth, in a 12-month growth, you you had vans, you had employees, and you did, it all came from deploying different strategies along the way, learning from them, and 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 continuously perfecting that process. And uh, I learned a lot about his business. He learned a lot about my business. He could look at a data sheet. He can jump into Google Ads, Bing, Facebook, and focus on the KPIs depending on what stage of the funnel. Uh, it's a great relationship. And I bring this up because service businesses are hard to get to the stage and if you have the opportunity to work somebody directly like this i say clear your runway if you can um, help them grow their business and along the way i think you'll discover so many cool things you can do with a business that if it seems easy it's i often think it's because either the business or the manager isn't really ready to grow it to the next stage i hope this helped uh and, I, and, and again, uh, this is just one case study that you can do this for e-com, we could do this for lawyer leads. Uh, you can continuously redefine your role every single day and, and, and add huge value for your clients. Um, if this helped, it would mean the world to me that if you subscribe below. And as always, good luck and happy marketing.